AAA games are absolutely broken. They release an unplayable, unfinished, and unacceptable condition. This isn't a new problem though, even fantastic games like Fallout 3 released with more bugs than an actual nuclear wasteland, like Kmart. But it's happening with more and more new games and I am tired of this malarkey. Fiddlesticks! Another one? Back in the early 2000s when I was a wee little gamer, I was playing all my games in the Game Boy Advance SP and the PS2, a legendary console. This was actually an era where consoles had no online connectivity. <gasps> what? No online? How did you make friends? Well, little Timmy, I had to do things manually back then, like walking down the street to my friend's house and plugging in a second controller into their physical console. What a golden period that was. When you went to the game store and turned in your hard-earned allowance, because let's be honest, we were like five years old, and you got a game back, as long as you bought from a recognizable brand, even things like EA, you were pretty sure you're getting a solid game. One of my favorite games back then was Pirates of the Caribbean The Legend of Jack Sparrow on the PS2 by Bethesda. It was by no means a great game, but I spent years going through that campaign over and over in both solo and co-op with my friends in real life, in person, with a physical second controller. And we had no problems, I can't remember any technical issues, game breaks, freezes, or anything like that. Certainly unlike more modern Bethesda games. Yes, long ago. Gamers lived in harmony. Then, everything changed when Xbox attacked. The first ever video game to receive a downloadable patch to fix parts of the game was Unreal Championship on the original Xbox, which we unfortunately cannot call the Xbox One because Microsoft did not pass their preschool counting class. One is usually first, Microsoft, not third. The trend of patching games after release wouldn't become popular until the seventh console generation, however, with the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Some people out there might have thought this practice was cool because the game gets balances, patches, fixes, but little me back then was already annoyed with the whole thing. All I knew was that I had 30 minutes to play Xbox before I had to walk to school, and that if I turned that thing on and saw I needed to update before I could play the game on my slow late 2000s internet, my entire day was ruined and I was ready to find whoever was responsible and tell them, I will look for you. I will find you. But like the captain of the Titanic, I was foolish to think this was just a little iceberg because it was a big one. A big iceberg. You get it? Because like it's mostly below, below the surface. There's like, it's a little bit on top and it goes way down. It's huge. This is one of the worst analogies I've ever made. Fast forward to the PlayStation 4 Xbox One era, and yes, this is the third Xbox, not the first one. And it became common to buy a disc and bring it home put it in the console and then download a patch the size of the entire game. Great, I just grabbed my new game. Can't wait to play tomorrow. Now, I actually missed a few years of new games here because I clung on to my Xbox 360 playing Halo Reach and Halo 3. So imagine my surprise when I came into the new generation in 2016 and saw what was going on. Battlefield 1 has a 45 gigabyte update? What? My Xbox 360 only came with 4 gigabytes of storage. Are you telling me this Battlefield update is 11 Xboxes large? I mean, sheesh, what are we even updating here, EA? It's not like there's been any new developments in the First World War. It would be all rainbows and sunshine if these updates were actually fun things like seasonal events for Christmas and free maps for multiplayer games, but we all know that's not the case. Everybody knows. Me, you, the lunch lady, Bill Clinton, Clinton, everybody knows it's not the case. These patches we get are less like fun Christmas game modes and more like studios frantically trying to give CPR to the games they pushed out their door without a pulse. Day one patches are so big because the disc only contains about half of the game. The big boy publishers like EA and Ubisoft that I'm always calling out for their shenanigans because they're so thick-headed they make a donkey look like a good conversation partner are the cause of this big mess. They set unrealistic release date expectations for their developers and refuse to budge on it because they have to get the sales out for their shareholders. Ooh, poor billionaires, they're not gonna get enough money. Because of this, devs, the people that actually pour their blood, sweat, and tears that are working hard every day on these games are forced to crunch. And no, I'm not talking about the sound your toast makes after you leave it in the toaster unattended while you go figure out what you're gonna watch while you eat. I'm talking about people being forced to work 12 hours a day, six days a week, for four months straight without seeing their family or leaving or eating or sleeping or seeing the sunlight because they're locked away in a dungeon, all because their corporate overlords don't want the game to miss the holiday release window. Kind of like how you don't wanna miss the videos I'm gonna make in this channel, so click subscribe.
It's free, and I won't lock you in a dungeon like them. At the end of development, games will go gold, which means a final version of the game will be put onto a master disc and then copied to millions of other discs to be sold. This usually happens months before release to give a company enough time to print millions of discs and ship them out to people worldwide. During this time period, devs will furiously crunch to try to fix the 10,000 issues the final version has since their publisher basically just grabbed an unfinished copy of the game from someone's desk during lunchtime and shipped it out to the whole world. This is kind of like being suddenly told to pack your bags because you're going on a trip today. I'm going on a trip today? This is so exciting! Mom, get the camera! We're going on a trip! You are 100% gonna forget stuff that you want to bring because you're in a rush to make sure you have everything and you're just gonna focus on the essentials. For developers, this hopefully means they fix all the major issues before release, but small bugs and things are gonna creep through the cracks because they simply don't have enough time to fix everything. None of this would be a problem if developers were allowed to finish a game completely before the publishers got their grubby little claws on it, but greed corrupts the soul. And it also corrupts your 600 hour Pokemon Scarlet and Violet save file. Thanks, Game Freak! I am so glad the newest release in the highest grossing media franchise in the history of humanity is in such a perfect state. Perfectly the worst thing that has ever happened to my childhood. Give it back. Give me back my Pokemon. I don't want this. This is awful. Sometimes, even the day one patch can't save a sinking ship. Buckle your seatbelts, folks. This ride's about to get rocky. The poster boy for how loud this ain't right is Cyberclunk 2077 Bugs. Cyberpunk's release date can be summed up by this classic cinema film from actor Adam Driver, aka Darth Vader 2, aka that one guy from Undercover Boss. I want every Bug. gun we have to fire on that man. This is the buggiest game I have ever played, and I frequently play Bethesda games. Unfortunately, Cyberpunk isn't alone. Fallout 76 had 16 times the bugs. There's GTA the Trilogy, the undefinitive edition. Days Gone was named appropriately because players lost several days of their lives to the game breaking. Assassin's Creed Unity unified the player base to complain about the game. Ghost Recon Breakpoint broke itself. New World broke computers. Arkham Knight on PC broke my patience, and Max Effect Andromeda broke my history TA's heart. He told us one day during class he was going to spend the entire weekend playing the new Mass Effect game, and the next time we saw him in class, he looked like a broken man. I could go on and on, but you get what I'm saying because your brain has wrinkles, unlike some people out there who run large gaming companies. Oh, it's okay, Bobby. Even if you're smooth brain, we still don't like you. Bugs aren't the only problem with games, though. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Another scam commonly seen in the gaming industry is the Big Promises plan. Studios put out trailers with impossible promises like every NPC in the entire world will have their own personal schedule every day. And yeah, players can meet up on the same planet if they can find each other in this massive shared open world universe. This one isn't really a funny crime, it's, a, it's an actual crime. In fact, No Man's Sky's developer Hello Games was investigated by the UK for false advertising. Don't forget Overwatch 2's big push for its new PvE game mode, which was marketed as the reason why the first game was shut down and replaced with this thing. Except, months later, there is still no sign of the PvE game mode. We don't even have a release date yet. There isn't even a true sequel to Overwatch yet. Just an overblown patch. Speaking of missing features, how about that silly little thing called, this live service game has no content? Yes, I am looking at you, Halo Infinite, Marvel's Avengers, Anthem, and a dozen other failed live service games that have less variety than Pac-Man. It has to be pretty embarrassing for a studio to put out a full game that has less content than the demo for Octopath Traveler 2. Okay, Halo Infinite launched with two multiplayer playlists where you can't pick the game mode you want, no Forge mode at launch, the game does not have split-screen co-op despite the promise from the studio that all future Halo games will have split-screen co-op after Halo 5, and it's missing just about every other feature and game mode that every previous Halo game has had. I have no idea what kind of state Halo Infinite is in right now because I don't have any interest in going back to that game that burned me. But last time I checked, it had less players than Battlefield 2042, and that atrocity needs to be burned at the stake.
You know what is complete on day one with all of these games though? The in-game store. So what is a poor gaming company to do when they accidentally intentionally release a buggy game that lied about its features and has no content? Well, they break out their secret weapon, of course. Roadmaps. This is beloved by all the Scrooge McDucks of the gaming industry and hated by everyone else. First, they come out and tell everyone they're sorry about the big oopsie they made. Aw, oh, we messed up. We'll fix it. We'll make it right. You're not sorry. You're just sad that people are refunding your game and you can't buy that new Ferrari with your massive bonus. Then they'll go draw up a big chart that says big update in March, fixing the missing features in June, and uh, our first paid DLC in October, after which they will miss every single point on the roadmap except for the things that people give them money for. Nobody wants your stupid map. People can't even read maps anymore. Why should we wait for you to give us everything we thought we were paying you for at launch? What a ridiculous notion. If I get home from Wendy's and I find out my spicy nuggets aren't in there, my lunch is already ruined. Nothing they do after that can fix the fact that my entire lunch consisted of semi-cold french fries. I uh, wanted the spicy nugs. First impressions last a lifetime, and you will never convince the vast majority of players to ever come back. The only thing that's coming back is my money after I get a refund. This has to stop. I will not sit by and watch my video game village get burned down by firebenders. Don't let these jokers get away with your money. Hit that refund if you can. Or better yet, don't buy it at launch. Watch and read a bunch of different reviews from different places and get a sense of if this game is good or not. Let them be the ones to be exposed to the horrors of these games, not you. And for the love of Gaben, do not pre-order video games. <laughs>